as you've probably seen on the channel, I've been testing the RTX 5090 now for quite a number of weeks in different sims, different VR settings, different VR headsets. And in this video, I'm going to give you my conclusion on whether I think it's worth it for you. Now, like me, you probably expected the RTX 5090 to be all about frame generation, AI, fake frames, all the rest of it. But VR can often mean a different story. What about its raw performance? That's something that I've been testing with so many different VR headsets, different flight sims. I've done benchmarking. I've just done casual videos and, you know, obviously flying for myself as well. And a lot of what the 5090 does really is all about the smoothness of how it feels in VR. However, I'm going to say right now, folks, that for most of you out there, it's not worth it. It really is not worth the crazy expense of buying a 5090 with the overinflation prices. Nvidia are having a laugh and really it's very frustrating that they can actually get away with this. But at the same time, this is the most powerful GPU in the consumer market. And it could be worth it for those out there, the small group of people, the pro enthusiasts that want to run the highest frame rates they possibly can with the highest resolution VR headsets out there. But you can achieve something very similar with a lower resolution headset, such as the big screen Beyond Version 2, with slightly lower VR settings. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you need a 5090 to get a Super. You don't. You really don't. I can run it with a 4070 Ti Super, which, in my opinion, is the best bang for your buck car at the moment, which is still expensive, but it does really pack a punch. It should go without saying that if you are going to upgrade to a 5090 from a 30 series graphics card, even a 3090 Ti, or even a 20 series graphics card, then you're going to see a massive jump in performance. But I think for 40 series owners, and again, I'm going to mention the 4070 and upwards, then it gets a little bit trickier. And using medium settings or even a little bit higher with DLSS 4, the 4070 Super can run the Pimax Crystal Super at a decent level of performance. Now, the comparisons I'm showing you here are various different circumstances using ultra settings in different sims, and I'll link those videos in the notes below. Now, for me personally, Coming from a 4090 to a 5090 with headsets such as the Mega Neck Super XR4 Somnium VR1, yes, it is worth it for me. And I think for a lot of flight sim fans out there, especially those who watch this channel, you're going to absolutely love the performance uplift, which in all honesty is not just about the FPS increase, it's the frame timing, which is massive in VR. But again, I'd like to reiterate, for most of you out there, don't think you need a 5090. You absolutely don't. And I'll have VR settings on the channel soon once Sim Update 2 Beta becomes an actual thing, which it might do by the time this video goes live, who knows. I'll have VR settings for a full range of different computers. Unless you're thinking about getting a Somni VR1 Crystal Super or Mega Next and want to run it at full TAA mode, then really the 5090 goes hand in hand. But for most of you out there, I actually think the Crystal Light and the Big Screen Beyond version 2 are the best value, best sort of mid to high end VR headsets that will run really well with something like a 4070 and obviously a 4090, maybe even a 3080 Ti and upwards actually. So that's just my thoughts really on the 5090, even though it has been worth it for me. I'm a bit of a weirdo when it comes to wanting the absolute highest VR experience possible. And for most normal people out there, and that's you watching this probably, it's not worth going that route. It really isn't. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.